right. Oh, yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Conchal International Film Festival plenary session. What is Conchal International Film Festival? It's a pleasure to introduce you to our moderator, actress, director, writer, Conchal International Film Festival founder and fest director, Magalie Coleman Christopher. Magalie is an award winning playwright, director, producer, and actor. She is currently playing the role of Antoinette Pierre in the Netflix original series, Grand Army. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction, Natasha. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I want to start off our session with a special thanks. You know, it's kind of like how you have a giving of thanks so that you can appreciate the, the bounty of your day. I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. We have amazing sponsors, Filmocracy, our industry sponsor, Final Draft, our award sponsor, Trill Vision, Bowie Enterprises. And I, I don't even know, need to go into who they are and what they're about. Just go ahead on our platform and click on the banners and you'll find all this amazing information about the organizations that believe in our mission and our vision at Conch Shell International Film Festival. And I wanna thank the team. It's so funny because recently I was on a clubhouse chat and we were talking about community and how we can't do things alone. And when you're doing something that is monumental, you definitely need a community. And so I wanna thank the community who came together to make this possible. Our production manager, Kira Bowie, marketing consultant, Rachel LeBlanc, Fest coordinators, Marquis Smalls and Tanya Taylor, Production intern, you just met her, Natasha. Natasha Mehara. And right here, right now, we have some of our awards jurists. You're looking at them. Look at them. They're smiling at you in their heart. They're really happy to be here. <laughs> we have Martin Robert Majeske. We have Marquise Small. We have Keith Randolph Smith. We're expecting some others, so maybe they'll pop in when they can arrive because they might be running late because life happens. We, so I'm gonna go ahead and list all of our awards jurists who aren't here right now. Anselm Richardson, Aude Lijon, Regina Taylor. And of, and of course, I'm gonna add one more. Tanya Taylor, she was one of our jurists and Marquise Smalls. I wanna give a special thanks also to Lamonia Dion Brown who said, Megaly, what about a plenary session? And I'm like, oh, yeah. You can't start a festival without a plenary session. So here we are. Here we are. Hello, gentlemen. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves. And since um, I'm looking straight at Mar Martin Majeski's smiling face, Martin, introduce yourself to our audience before we get it started talking about CSIFF. Uh, I thought I wasn't smiling. Yeah, well, no. I can see your smiling heart. So I'm going to say you're smiling. So there, be done. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Robert Majeski, I am um, the managing director of the Act Now Foundation, and we put on a festival every year. It's actually been a couple of years now with COVID. Um, new Voices in Black Cinema Festival, it had been going on at BAM Cinematheque. We're actually looking for a new home, and we're looking forward to that. And whether, whether or not it's in the fall of this year, or likely next year, 2022, that's when we'll be coming back. Um, but it's a festival that, um, had pretty good success over the years. Features, shorts, and web series. It's an um, amazing festival. It's not a pretty good festival. It's an amazing festival. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me. That's the main thing that I do. I'm also an entertainment attorney in the city. So I go around doing other things in arts and entertainment, film, and, theater, et cetera. But. And he's very humble. You could tell that by looking at him, very humble. Let's That's move on to the next humble person in the room. Marquis Smalls. You look at him all humble. He's over there in Timbuktu on That's his right. throne. That's right. <laughs> Enjoying my kingdom. <laughs> and I also have to say this, Martin, like I, I got started when I made my first content in films and Aaron Ingram and in Act Now was very supportive and then also you know, the the BAM Cinematech screening series you guys have also. I've um, really enjoyed being a part of that and loving my experiences with that. Um, 
community as well as just the support that you guys provide. So I want to thank you so much for that. Um, and yeah, so I'm a writer, director, producer um, who started out as a teacher and realized I did not want to become a um, school administrator. And so found my passion and calling in wanting to educate and entertain a la KRS-One with edutainment um, in film and writing and producing and directing. And at this point, um, I've enjoyed a wonderful career that has you know, led me to you know, some great heights and just continuing to try to share you know, my thoughts and vision and creativity with the world. Thank you. What a testimony to the power of a festival to change someone's world, huh? Yeah. And the importance of the community saying, yes, you can. Yep. Keith Randolph Smith. Hi, hey, uh, I'm blessed to be here. I'm a son, a brother, a nephew, an uncle, a friend, a grandson, a student, a beginner, a griot, storyteller. And I try to be present to uh, any spirits I meet along the road. And I try to be as helpful as I can. So if you ever need help, please don't hes hesitate to ask me. Whatever I can do for you, I will always. Peace and blessings. All right, peace to that. And I'm gonna add to this that he's an amazing artist. So when he says he can help, if you ever have a question or an inquiry, he can. he's gonna do his best to help you. He's gonna be giving you a great deal because he's a font of creative knowledge. So getting on to this, this festival. Now I called you Martin, Martin Robert. Yes. And I called you Marquis Smalls. And I was like, Martin, Martin, I'm gonna do this festival. I'm gonna do this festival. The, the, this pandemic is ideal for this festival. And we talked about it and we talked about it and talked about it. And so it's here, it's here. And I've been talking to a lot of people about the mission, the mission of this festival. And, and I wanna get a sense from you gentlemen, when you signed on to be part of our awards jury, when you signed on to be a festival coordinator, what was going through your mind? What about the mission made you say, I'm gonna put some time into this? Because I'm sure a lot of people are knocking on your door. Hey, hey, Marty, hey, Keith, hey, Marquise, help me out. I got, I, I got this idea. What made you say, you know, yeah, to this mission? What, 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 what's the one nugget? Is it the celebrate, the elevate, the motivate? What is the nugget about the mission of our festival regarding Caribbean diaspora and Caribbean voices that made you say, okay. Does anybody jump on in? I'm not gonna call like in class, although I can't, because I've been a teacher before. Well, I'm gonna I'm jump in and just say that, um, first it was you, because I just knew that once you put your mind to something, it was going to be phenomenal and it was gonna be awesome. Um, and with that in mind, and knowing that I wanted to support you while still just opening a platform for people to celebrate our work. You know, like I, I am a firm believer that we need to celebrate ourselves and look at it as a way to elevate our culture and creativity and artistry through our own eyes and not wait for others to validate us. So that's why this was something I felt I had to do. Thank you, Marquis. Yeah, I'll so pick up the mic. I'll pick up. I'll pick up. Well, he, he, you know, he stole the first reason, which is yourself, Natalie Christopher Collin. You asked. Mm -hmm. to. No, Christopher Coleman. No, no, baby, no, but no, no. Kaliman Christopher came Kali out the womb. Kaliman. God, <laughs> Kaliman became Kaliman Christopher. Ooh, you've known me for 20 some odd years. You're like, oh, I think I'm breathless with shock. Stop. <laughs> I've been correct. <laughs> okay, going back to you. It's not about me, it's about you. Well, you know, you're always doing great things. And when you asked me to do this, I was, uh, I was gonna do whatever I could and whatever time allowed, of course. But I think um, I was really happy to see um, what you were going after because it was all about Caribbean film and it was dedicated to Caribbean film. Caribbean, Caribbean diaspora. Cur and diaspora film, correct. Um, and as long as I've been in this, you know, film festival space, I'm not sure that I'm familiar with, you know, 
uh, film festivals dedicated. I'm sure they're out there and I'm sure there's many. And I know BAM has some stuff, but I'm not sure I've seen many. So I was glad to see that you were going after it and I knew you were a person that was in the space, of course. And uh, I thought you were gonna do a great job. So I was really encouraged. And it was gonna be an opportunity for me to, to get a chance to see what was out there, of course. So I'm gonna come back to you on finding out about what you saw out there. I, I just need to bring Keith in on this. I wanna hear Mr. I've done my own film festival very successfully. Tell me what you thought about what you saw out there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that out. I, I know you will. Keith. Yes, ma'am. I have to fall in step with Martin and uh, my piece, uh, number one being you as the uh, the uh, North Star, um, um, the facilitator, the uh, spiritual mother of uh, the project, and then the content, Caribbean diaspora work, uh, which doesn't, uh, it's not every day that it gets lifted up and you hear that uh, name, title, every day, as we should hear it every day, 365. So thank you for doing it. And uh, I just wanted to, I always, I'm a, I'm a story keeper. I love stories, so I wanted to see the stories because I could give a shit less about American stories, to tell you the truth. Wow, okay, we're gonna stay with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I could give a shit less about American stories. Blowing up things and superheroes, really? I'm sure there's a mythology in there and Joseph Campbell and all of that. I get that. Different stories. And those stories come from Antarctica to the Caribbean to Japan to Korea. So all of those stories I'm interested in. Thank you for sharing that. Now I'm bouncing back to you, Marty, because I can't let that one go. Come on, come on. I want to hear, expand on what you started because I'm curious and I'm sure everybody out there is curious. Curious about? About the point that you made about discovering the content that's out there for the Caribbean diaspora, coming from the Caribbean diaspora and the Caribbean. Because I'm amazed because of the world that you're in that, and, and, and you know, I'm in the world too, because I'm always hunting for a film festival. And yeah, there aren't a ton of them. And so I'm amazed that you, deep into film festivals for quite a long time, haven't really been exposed to or like awakened to the, the, the festivals that really highlight those voices. And what did you discover as you were watching all these films and processing for 2022 for yourself? Yeah, I mean, film festival. The question still in my mind as I sit here right now, why haven't I seen uh, such festivals? Why haven't I seen the, the kind of content that might be out there? You know, so when I was going through all of the curation that you all had did, done in judging the festival, all I can think of was, wow, this is, opens a whole new door in a lot of different ways for me. Just seeing the names of the filmmakers, seeing what they were, how they were approaching their work, what topics they were interested in, just got me very inspired. But I'm not sure, you know, I could really give any insight into why we haven't seen more, why there hasn't been that fo the focus. Um, I mean, we, you know, when we're curating our films, of course, we're as open as, as any Black film festival to Caribbean works and topics. Um, but we don't always get them. So maybe that's something that's on us. Maybe we should be looking further and wider and contacting more communities, even here in, in, um, in New York City, where you and have I, such a heavy population, so. And I like that you said that, that you're not getting the content. So, you know, what I really am excited about Saturday and Sunday are the panels that we have planned that are, the, the whole aim of curating these panels was to blow out the preconceptions of, what should I be doing? How should I be approaching the industry? How can I approach the industry? That, you know, I'm sure there are these topics that some people have explored, but we're gonna have them all in one event 
so that you can potentially get submissions from more Caribbean diaspora and Caribbean filmmakers because they're gonna be awakened, hopefully if they attend our festival, to thoughts that they hadn't considered. They will have an awareness that, that surpasses their current awareness, you know? And, and when you looked at the panels that I put together for the festival, when I sent you the program, what were some thoughts that went to your mind, Marquise, Keith, and Martin? Again, I, I just feel like it was um, empowering. You know, that's the word that comes to my mind, like giving voice to people who um, may not have had their voices heard or just may not have even connected, um, you know, with people like Marty, you know, and um, we need to just continue to grow our own ecosystems that we can share information, share content, share stories. Um, you know, and like Keith says, like we have to maintain and be keepers of our own story. And so that's really where, you know, I see something like this being valuable. And so festivals in general, okay? Where do you see the future for festivals in general with this mindset of owning our narrative and telling your story and, and letting your, your community's voice be heard in venues beyond the ones that are community-based, going to the international platform? Because you know that's what I really love about this filmocracy platform. Anybody on the planet can go in here and be watching this conversation. You're not limited by the lack of funds to get on an airplane or get a hotel room. You are in your home. You're in the comfort of your home, gaining this knowledge, seeing this amazing work. So wh what do you imagine as like the future for festivals and for film, given this opportunity with this online streaming platform? I just heard from one of the... Um, members of one of the film teams uh, saying, this is great. This is great that you're able to do this. And I wanna hear from you. I know you haven't poked around, but what do you think I mean, about the future for film festivals with the streaming opportunity? I mean, yeah, the streaming gives people obviously an opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise have, right? If they can't make a film festival, if they're you know, not, not able to travel, if they're not interested in, in networking in person or whatever it might be, right? You have this online platform that's gonna enable people to experience something they wouldn't otherwise be able to. But people want that in-person experience as well, right? So part of the big reason that people wanna to go to festivals is to meet people and to talk to people and to have a screening experience where people, uh, you get, get to actually see how people are, are reacting to your film in real time. So I think that people are looking, uh, the future, I think, what we can expect is sort of a hybrid experience, right? Where you get the best of both worlds, where you're able to show up, you're able to network with people, you're able to uh, have that one-on-one -on -one experience, you're able to learn from people and have those mentorship relationships, because I think that those are, are best done in person. But at the same time, you're gonna have more of an opportunity to, to catch as many panels, uh, get as much education, as much um, networking, um, as many business opportunities that might be available as you can through an online form like this. So I, right. I a hybrid experience. Right. So you've become, you've you have a doppelganger, Keith. They're, they're like two of you right now. Oh, now it's one of you. Okay. <laughs> I got really confused. I'm like, Keith has a twin. And, yeah, and, and, and you got kicked off. You see, that's one of the things about the internet thing. They can smack you around, but it's not personal. <laughs> and any thoughts, Marquise? about the question that I asked? Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a fest festival goer and that's really how I even got my film education um, from attending festivals. And I do feel like this format and this platform, um, particularly this filmocracy platform, I, I believe is really great. Um, and I would hope that it extends to even larger festivals where more people can just access. and particularly for us in America, we can hopefully access more international festivals and not have to, you know, take the expense of going there. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to get there, but at the same time, you know, with our schedules and with the work that we do, sometimes it's difficult to coordinate. And I even remember, you know, as a teacher, when I was teaching, 
I could never go to Cannes. And even though I had a film in Cannes, like it was like during our main testing season, not till eighth grade. So it was like leaving my students at that point would have been blasphemous. And so things like that hopefully will open up where people can experience, you know, festivals that they may not have the either resources or the scheduling to get to. When was the last time you went to a film festival, Keith? <sighs> oh my. It's been a while. Uh, so that's why I think this time we're living in right now could be, um, it might stay a while because correct, um, we all can't go to these wonderful places to uh, see film festivals. I mean, it'd be nice to keep them going, but what about uh, also having a virtual arm in it? So if you can't make it to can, that you can still be there, but from here. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, that, that's really funny. I have spoken to so many people in different chat rooms during interviews and what you said is not uncommon. A lot of people have never been to film festivals. And my first film festival was when we met Marty in 1999. That's right. And I live in New York. Like there is no excuse, but I never ventured to the to any film festival within, you know, like a train ride from where I am. That was but my first one. Yeah. That was yours too? First one too. I have to thank Jill Lawrence for saying, Magalie, let's go to the game. I was like, the what? It's like, let's go. It's going to be so good. I just graduated from grad school and she was like, it's going to be a great opportunity. I'm like, okay, I like movies. So when I hear people say film festival, okay, I totally get it. I totally get it. So here's my thing. How do we get people out of the film festival? Okay, Mo, into the, I gotta go to a film festival this year. I'm gonna go to a film. How do we do that? How do we do that? Because if we're trying to tell our story and we wanna just not try to make our story um, necessarily like main, main stream, whatever that means, we wanna tell our story our way and we, and we want to be within our community and we wanna invite people into our community. We want to celebrate ourselves. How do we change the film festival? Okay. What do you think? How do we disrupt that? How do we shift that? Let's brainstorm. That's my hunger. Cause, cause it's like people will go to a Super Bowl game. <laughs> and all they do is eat food and drink and they don't even watch the game. And they'll go to an Oscar party and not even watch the Oscars. But when you say go see emerging works that you'll never see, unless of course they go to Netflix or Amazon because they're shorts, but they're like, they're like eating diamonds of beautiful work that you wouldn't want to eat a diamond, but okay, eating a mango, a delicious sweet mango. How do you get, how do we switch that mindset? Let's brainstorm and let's put that into the cosmos so that we can imagine a future for film festivals that focus on work of the underrepresented, under-elevated, under-celebrated voices so that they could be super celebrated, super elevated. Oh, well, so Clinton, the, Roche, the, Clinton Roche says, yeah. invite social influencers and make it a cool thing. Yeah, but festivals do that all the time. I mean, I go to I go to Pan African. They always invite you know famous people. I go to a lot of these festivals with famous people. Love that, but let's okay. I'm not going to discount you, Clinton. I like that suggestion. How many people vote for so, invite social influencers? Yeah, no, I agree. Like, I agree. I agree. That's why I festivals agree. like okay. you know ABFF, Sundance, um, Pan African. Urban world. That's why they've been around so long. And social, social influencers. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. that's not the main reason, but okay. it's a part of the experience. Okay. You know, because you want to have people who, you know, have a um, accomplished background be some of the faces. But I think again, I think that that's still just the gloss. To answer your question, I feel like what we need to embrace is that. 
that substantive person, mm. not necessarily the um, flashy or famous or well-known person, but the substantive people that are doing the work. Yeah. And we need to start celebrating the longevity as well as like the behind the scenes people, you know, like Marty and Keith and people that we need to elevate their awareness and influence because the mainstream won't do it because it's not flashy enough for the mainstream. So we have to elevate ourselves internally and stop waiting for other people to say, okay, now, you know, Jamie Foxx has been, you know, Oscar nominated. So now we want him. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we have to actually see that talent in people before they get to that level and elevate them from within. Yes. Yes. I am tempted to ask Clinton Roche if he wants to come to the stage. How do we do that? Because I really want to pick his brain about what he means. Because I might be missing. I'm thinking TikTok stars. So how many people thought TikTok stars when he, TikTok stars and Instagram stars were, uh, were the first thing that came to mind for me when I thought in social influencers. So is there any way, Kira, that you can ask Clinton Roche if he wants to come on stage? Or maybe that's Ava Marie. I don't know who it is who said that. Is there any way we can bring that person on stage so that we can ask them what they meant? Because I totally went TikTok, Instagram, YouTube star. That, that didn't, that happened to you too, Marty. You know it did. Come on. Come on, say you did. Come on, you did. I did. Social influencers to me could be TikTok people, but it could it could just be people that people want to be around, right? People that people love and are fashionable, or people that uh, are a part of the business that people want to learn from, or just be around. I mean, I remember, you know, we talked about Acapulco, uh, the ABFF when it was in Acapulco, and I remember that experience being. A great one because of the accessibility yeah. that we had to the named, right? The filmmakers and the actors and the, you know, uh, the Bill Dukes of the world. We could just walk up to them at a table and sit down and talk to them about. Yeah, Warrington and, Hudlin. And, you know, we were all young at the time. And, right, there were, and, and there were so many of those people that were there and there, there weren't any bodyguards around them and there weren't, you know, roped off chains and and things like that so yeah you know it's all about i think accessibility if people know that they're going to to come to come somewhere or or even be virtually somewhere where they're going to get a chance to touch and feel and talk to and be affected by and inspired personally by somebody then that that that's how you develop a great reputation uh for your event for your festival for for uh for an experience, right? Because it, you know, festivals are so expensive, right? We didn't talk about that before. Yeah. But one, one of the great things about the virtual experience, right? You could just tune in. Um, you might have to pay something, but you're not going to pay for a plane ticket and a hotel and expensive food and all the rest of it. Um, so, people want to pay for those things because they want to they want access, right? Or they want at the end of the day, and we're talking about people who are in the business, they want to be able to conduct business. They want they want to somehow gain something in terms of their careers um, by, by being there. So I think that's part of it also is that accessibility. For fans, for film, people that just want to, to experience the films. And um, I mean, people want to be around, people want to be in an audience, I think. I think people want to be online, but people want to be in the audience. People want both. It depends right. on the audience there. Well, I but just saw, I I'm sorry, Ava was answering about what she meant by, so, so it is Ava Marie, and she's in charge of marketing for Sweet Rhyme. And she was answering, she, she doesn't want to be on camera, so she said, people also seem also like to be seen. I feel like if attendees get an opportunity to be a star, it'll attract younger people. And uh, I also feel like if we can cultivate interest in filmmaking in children, it will expand the reach. And that's what I feel like the the, having festivals online makes it accessible to the children because you don't have to worry. I mean, you, the parents can watch to make sure that they're watching the right event, but it's a learning tool. These panels, I literally, I'm one of those people, I'll go to film festivals and just go to panels. Like I'll go to Tribeca for panels. I'm like, so the films, uh, panels. I'll go to ABFF or Urban World 
or or pan African for movies and panels. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's really it's like we all go for different things, but I definitely want to learn, and I want to learn in the with the masters talking to me like we are right now with people where I can ask questions, which and make you know suggestions just like we're doing in this chat. And yeah, people want to be in the same room with people, but then you know it's like that's that's what I'm really grateful for this site, Filmocracy, because we do have the ability to see people. You sit down at a table, turn on your camera, have a conversation. And I don't know about you, but I've gotten really comfortable with Zoom. I really feel intimate talking with people on Zoom because I'm actually looking at their faces, right? I'm not like dazing off because they'll see me dazing off. Or I'm looking straight at the camera because you know you got to make direct address with the audience. But we, we're actually—I feel like I'm interacting more intimately than when I was doing face to face, where I was busy hiding. Maybe it's just me because the camera is my first favorite friend because I'm always open to the camera. Yeah. Um, but I just really feel that as long as these platforms, if festivals do go live and virtual, and if festivals like ours that focus on the voices of people of color, have those two components, it will breed the next generation. Cause they won't feel like, oh, I can't go there cause I'm not fancy enough or cool enough, but they'll go online and have the anonymity of observing the event. Like there could be people watching right now and they just don't wanna be on camera and ask a question. So they have the, 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 the freedom of observing and learning, taking notes and letting it be. So I feel that, that, and also I was reading this amazing article about how these online film festivals are a conundrum, right? There are a lot of people who've held off on submitting their films to film festivals because it's not quite sure whether it's a premiere, if it's an online film festival, they're not quite sure if the buyers are gonna be coming to an online film festival. And so they were saying, this is what you can do, online film festivals, listen to the filmmakers, see what they need, create the community. And you know, as when you come back into the spaces, that community will be connected with you because they have the faith in your ability to move their vision forward by creating the community that they're seeking. Because ultimately as filmmakers, we are community seekers. You can't shoot a film by yourself. You need a sound man or this man, or this, that. I mean, there's a whole big team of people. That's then right. there's the actor. You know, one in the beginning, you find out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, look, we, we're going to testify here, Marty and I. Marty has worked with me on two of my projects. Come on, go ahead, go ahead, Marty, go ahead, go ahead, say it, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, madam, my first film and my web series, Marty was there, producer, 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 all because of a film festival. Absolutely. All because we shared a passion for film that we discovered that we did because we were sitting at a table in a film festival, having conversations at a film festival. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's my, my goal for this film festival. So when we're talking about the mission and the vision for Conchell International Film Festival is to continue creating this space for Caribbean diaspora and Caribbean filmmakers to sit at the table brainstorm, commune, say, oh, you know what? I was dreaming about shooting in Jamaica, but it's so expensive. Oh, you know what? I own a farm. I own a building, blah, blah, blah. Come on down. I will produce it. And then you can have access. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Community, community, community. I know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Community, community, community. Because quite frankly, all these other filmmakers who are successful, who belong to different groups, they're all about community. Yeah. And it's and, something you've been doing for a long time too, Magali, which is really what I appreciate a lot about you. You've always, stayed, you've always stayed in touch with me. You've always been talking about community. You've always been talking to me about how the need to build community. And you've always um you've always been about that. So preach on. I appreciate you in that way. Thank you. Thank you. And you lead with your passion. Because if you don't have passion, why do anything? Exactly. How are you going to make a film? Because especially if you don't have a, a, a huge budget, you got to get in there. And the reason that you show up every day and continue 
is because of that original spark of passion which you have. Thank you. Thank you. And it's because of people like you guys that I see that I'm not alone, right? And so when I went to ABFF and I met Warrington Hudlin, who'd been in the industry so long, but he was on fire. He was on fire for the art form. I'm like, wow. And he was so dedicated to inspiring all of us, anyone he met. He was like, what do you want to know? I was like, I want to be like him. I want to put everybody, I want to keep everyone on fire for the art form to cross the, 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 the age line, the, the economic line. We're all artists, mm -hmm. artists with a passion. And so I learned so much by just like observing him every time I went to ABFF when he was affiliated with it. And even now, I, I think he, I, last time I saw him, he was at the Museum, Museum for the Moving Image and his passion is just like, like a Nova star. That's the craft. That's the craft. And so another thing I want to talk about, I want, I want to inspire in the industry is if we focus on the craft and together we will blossom. If you focus on being accepted by by, by one group of people as opposed to growing your craft and defining your identity, Grow that, and people will come. Look at look at all these people who do that. The, 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 what is it, the field of dream mindset? Yeah, the field of dream mindset. Build it, and they will come. But you can't be shy. Build it and like like put gates around it. You build it and put it out there. That's right, that's right. I mean, yeah. you know, it's really cool to, make a, to make a film that's going to be just scooped up by Netflix, right? Because filmmaking is so expensive. Well, it's hard to make a film period, right? It's, it's hard to tell a good story. It takes some practice. And, um, and that means it's gonna take maybe a little bit of time. And it's definitely gonna take you a little bit of money and commitment. So you have to be rooted in the art. You have to be rooted in the passion and the craft. And that's why it's so important to bring, bring people together so that you have that support. And you have that unifying theme that it's about the storytelling, right? It's about the craft because all those other things are, go are gonna be problems that you're gonna have to tackle. And you're gonna need a support network to get it all done. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's more accessible. Filmmaking is more accessible, but at the same time, it's more competitive. It's more what? More competitive. Oh yeah, yeah. But competition is good. Life is competitive. Walking down the street, trying to beat the car before it crosses, turns a corner, that's a competition. So I, 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 I love it when young people ask me, oh, should I get in this industry? It's so competitive. I'm like, you want to work at the post office? That's competitive. You know how many people want to work there? A lot of people want to get that income. Although I should say Amazon because that's more, that's, there are more opportunities there. You see, everything you do is a competition. You go to the grocery store, you want to get the best piece of chicken. You're going to compete with somebody else who wants the best piece. So life is about vying for what you are passionate about. And so if you're passionate about something, it, there is no competition. The only competition is how passionate will I be today versus yesterday. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And I want to go back to your um, initial question, Magali, um, and how do we expand on you know film festivals and just continuing to push it forward for the future. And I think a real key element to it is somehow tying distribution into film festivals. And I know that, you know, the major ones, they tend to, you know, maybe get buyers out and um, distribution networks, but that's another part of where I think we, especially people of color, Caribbean people, African people, American, um, African-American people, um, we need to start to unify along those lines and create distribution, more and more distribution channels yeah. so that we can economically support and, mark and market together um, because it's just difficult to compete for, eyebrow, you know, for eyeballs when you don't have distribution systems in place that readily have markets available. And there's so many underserved markets, which you know, we find out you know, either after the fact or through, you know, happenstance by a film surprising people 
Um, mm-hmm. But we know that there are underserved audiences out there and we need to figure out a way to do that ourselves and not just rely on the Netflixes and the Amazons. And, and we really need to get to the point of like, what is the Caribbean Netflix and what is the, you know, the black, whatever, you know, like we, we need to make sure that we're continuing um, to build those distribution networks and not settle for just a handful that are out there. And that's why I'm really happy that one of our sponsors is Trill Vision because that's a new distribution network. It's an app that's available on Android and Apple. David Velo Stewart, he's gonna be one of our panel moderators on Sunday. And that's creating opportunities for filmmakers who want to monetize their short film or their feature film because they can put it on the platform and they decide if they're gonna be charging for it or not charging for it, or they just wanna build audience so they won't charge for it. But that's a distribution platform. So people need to be doing their due diligence, you know, gr- seeing who's grinding out opportunities for you to get your work seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me see. I don't think we have any questions. So I want you, I, I love what you shared about your vision for stronger distribution networks that get to the market that we want to serve right and beyond i mean you can serve one market but the thing is somebody may come over and say you know i really like what you're selling can i come into your market so opening up opening up those channels of this is here we're selling it in this market but we're going to expand beyond like netflix started in the us and now it's all over the planet anywhere that has wi-fi has netflix and who would have thunk back in where when was it that i was getting those red envelopes what year was the red envelopes? Come on, you guys, you can help me. When were we getting Netflix red envelopes where you can get a movie, uh, every time you mail it in, you get another one and you just spend like $5.99 to Netflix mm. th- that it is today. See, they created a distribution network that trounced what? Blockbusters? And nobody thought that they could? But they right. did it. So that's a case study on the endless possibility. No one thought any company that was going around mailing you movies. Because, you know, back in the day when you could spend a penny and get a whole bunch of cassettes. Okay, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, 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 you put the penny on the thing and you send the. I used to do that so much. My mom was like, Magalie, stop that. I'm not paying for cassettes. I'm like, it's a penny. It's like, Magalie, it's not a penny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those days when, you know, you, and, and people were still going to the stores to buy their, their, from Tower to going to Tower Records to buy their records and their so on and so forth. But then it then came a point where, you know, the distribution network altered and you have your iPhone. So just because it doesn't exist right now doesn't mean that the new one that comes out won't stick around for a long time and blow up. And so, what, and so that the snobbery that I think sometimes occurs among the film industry is like if I if if I haven't seen you in Variety magazine, maybe I shouldn't be dealing with you. We we might need to check that, right? Yeah, we definitely do. We definitely do. And and I want to go back to your point about Netflix and. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about how prior to Netflix, the big thing was Blockbuster. Yeah. And so people would actually go to Blockbuster. It was like an experience. I, I remember it was like, you know, you would plan to go to Blockbuster, get your three movies, come home, take them back by the time that that time was up. And then once Netflix came out, all they did was figure out, and this is again, another extension of how Amazon figured it out too. They really just figured out how to get product to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And we need to take advantage of technology now and these types of platforms to now use that same mentality to get product to as many different people across the globe as we can, but from our perspective and from the things that we believe uplift and empower us and are not necessarily coming through that you know, lens of, okay, this is gonna appeal to this certain type of person that doesn't look like us. Yeah. You know, and we really need to embrace that some of our stories are not just meant to be embraced by others because those stories actually change the narrative that they put out about us for so long. And those are not the stories they want to tell. So we gotta embrace that counter programming narrative. And, and we gotta this- continue to counter program it and then find ways to get these stories to as many people around the world as we possibly can 
using the technology and using the streaming services and platforms and, and apps that we have access to. And here's what I want to throw out there. Blockchain. Blockchain is going to change how all communication occurs. That's an opportunity for reaching markets and also 5G is going to be an opportunity for reaching markets that could maybe spend a dollar for your movie, but they're like 10 million of those people with a dollar for your movie and buying into your movie because they're like, I see myself in your story. I see myself in your story. And I don't have to pretend that, you know, maybe someday I'll be like that person. It's like, I know that person. And yet there's a journey to hope. Because, you know, ultimately, that's what we were. I personally, I'm writing stories of hope. There's, there has to be some breakthrough, or else what's the point? It's not Hollywood, it's not Disney, but there is hope, right? So I'm loving this. The endless possibilities of not just this film festival, but the community of this film festival. And I'm so grateful that you gentlemen are part of this community. So grateful and everyone will learn so much just by interacting with you and hearing your thoughts and yeah. Thank, Thank you. you for Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yes. This is important, Magali. Thank you. I love I, I love what you, what you're doing, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of um, the rest of the festival virtually here online, and then what comes out of this in terms of distribution. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is this is a form of distribution. What we're doing here. Right. What right. you're doing is distribution in itself, right? We Absolutely. All agree. <laughs> yeah, so it's about, it's about taking this and you know, it's a seed and you go from here and you expand on it. I want to yeah. add one more comment that we got. We got with the number of platforms, Netflix, Amazon, Trill Vision, YouTube, all social media, any thoughts on how to draw? Oh, that's a question. Any thoughts on how to draw viewers to your content? So people are putting content on TikTok. Okay, I mentioned it because I just started researching TikTok and I just started using it. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm cool now. But, and YouTube, it's been around for a long minute. But how do you draw viewers to your content? And I'm still saying film festivals, because there's so many people, filmmakers I knew nothing about, but I learned about them in film festivals and sought them out afterwards looking for their name when I went and looked at other film festivals to see, are they, are they screening here? And I'm guilty of being one of those people who will look for filmmakers of color. Oh, okay, I wanna see your film. I wanna see what you have to say, because that, that's, my, that's my lens. Of course, women and people of color, because I think women's voices are not represented sufficiently. But the point of the matter is, that is how you get attention to your content. You can't be thinking you're gonna wait for Netflix to find you if you put it, I mean, yeah, of course they could find you on TikTok and Instagram and all these things. But the thing is, by getting in a film festival, you'll get in front of the audience that will create the demand for your voice. Yeah. Because that's how film festivals choose your work. Some film festivals want to see that. Have you been in any, any others? Because some film festivals don't mind your film having been screened before because they want an audience that comes with you. And you know, that's how the distributors figure out, do I want to pay attention to you? Because either they went to the film festival or someone that they know went to the film festival and said, you need to check out this person. And it all starts with the film festival. Yeah, Remember you want to get your stuff in as many festivals as you can. And you, you want to you wanna get on the virtual platforms. And, you know, there's there are a whole lot more now, right, with the, with the virtual um, with Zoom and, and, and everything else, filmocracy, of course. Um, if you can't get them on in the film festival, you screen it yourself, you know? I mean, there it's you easy go. To, but that's what you do because you, you, you do what you can. And they're communities. They're communities that screen. Robert, Mar Marty, tell them about your community. When you come back, you screen. They do weekly screenings. Talk about that. I'm not, it's not just about me. Come on. Yeah, I mean that's right. We do a film festival, but we also have events where we just have we just do screenings. Usually they're short films, and we give people opportunities to put their stuff up, so that they get a chance to see the reaction of an audience to their to their films. And we're not as we're not as critical. We often give opportunities to filmmakers that haven't had them before, 
just so they get that experience of seeing them, seeing their work up and getting that feedback and having that experience themselves. Of exper experiencing the screening is an experience unto itself. Yeah. yeah. So there are opportunities, different organizations do screenings and it's not always about competition and it's not, not always about your best work. But if you're doing work and you're putting it out there, you're gonna have people that are gonna be interested in giving you an opportunity. Yeah. True, true. You know, it, being creative with um, how you share the stories. Uh, if I'm writing, a, 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 I have a film and I, I've done one. It's about uh, dealing with mental health issues. Why wouldn't I have a screening for psychiatrists, psycho uh, psychologists and social workers? Not everybody that's walking down the street, just for them, because they all belong to medical societies, which include 5,000 others. So if they really are attracted to it, then they tell their friend. And it still you know, goes back to the kind of an old way of doing it. One person tells another person, only this way, the way we live now, one person, an influencer, or uh, Instagram, TikTok, I can tell if I have 50,000 followers, I can tell them with a post. And so then that becomes the one person telling the other person and telling someone else. And so being creative and how we uh, offer it, um, say if it's about a certain community, like uh, uh, there was a screening of um, Slim and- Queen and Slim? Queen and Slim shot my hometown where he got stopped and killed that policeman. That scene was shot in Cleveland, Ohio, in my old neighborhood, back in the hood. They had a screening there for the people because they lived where they shot. Wow. That kind of thing. It's like, oh, and then you sit there and you have my son who watches it and you get personally touched. I know that street. I've been stopped 27 times, a number I'm just making up by police and had all my trunk, em trunk emptied on that street. So then there's a personal connection for those people who live in that community. So it becomes using all that creativity and passion that you have to make the film, which is why you need that community talking about, because it's hard for that one person to be all. They can, but it helps, it's like, this person specializes because today everything is marketing and it has been for a long time. If no one knows you exist, then you'll be watching in a cave. Mm -hmm. You have to have someone whose way of viewing the world is through marketing because that's so important and specialized. You mm -hmm. wouldn't come to me because I wouldn't know what to tell you. I could throw out some ideas, but a person who um, whose passion is that will be able to help you and, and build your community even larger and larger and larger. Thank you, that's powerful. Because that definitely goes back to what is the purpose of Constellence National Film Festival is to give you that community you know, not just, not not the community around that corner where they're shooting, but in the, a community around that corner where they're shooting that has a corner like that, where, they, where that happens. And another corner that's like that. And so all those people share that similar, not the same, but a similar life experience. And the life experience I'm talking about is the relationship with the Caribbean and they are your audience. They are your community, they are your supporters, they are your financers, they are your distributors. And across language lines, endless potential. Endless potential, you know? Thank you gentlemen so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Marty, Marquis, Key. Thank you for your contribution. And thank you to everyone who attended and all your amazing questions and suggestions. Let's keep the conversation going for the next three days, three months, three years, three decades. Let's, kept, let's keep the conversation growing 
and growing and growing because Tyler Perry has a film studio and it's not because he didn't talk to his community. Amen. Okay. All yeah. right. And Marquise, you looking for something? Let me get some glasses for you, About to, um, Yeah, I don't have my glasses on, but I wanted to type into the chat my website so anybody that wants to reach out. There you uh, go. You can actually hit me up and know about all the many great things I have coming up. And uh, both Keith and Marty, I will be reaching out to both of you um, to stay in touch and also let you know what I got going on and looking forward to partnering and continuing to just build community with everyone. Appreciate that. Let's do that. No yeah. Doubt. I love it. This is why we have Conchal International Film Festival. That is the purpose. Thank you again. Have a lovely night. And hey, 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 there's an after party. Do not go and take a nap, okay? Don't go watch TV. Yeah, after what time party. It's what time? at nine, nine to oh, 10 right. every day. So I do have time for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I got to put my dancing shoes on. <laughs> you don't have to. No one's going to see your feet unless you go you tilt your tent, your camera there. Just as long as we see this. That's right. So, I'm going to yeah. do the two steps. So I do got time and I don't have to travel nowhere. So, and when you get sweaty, you just jump in your shower. You be there. Good. It is. There it is. No one's going to complain about your body odor when you're sweaty. That's you're right. good. That's right. <laughs> good night, gentlemen. Thank night. you so much. Be well and see you at nine. All right, ladies. All right, thanks for having me. All right, yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs>